In this video, we're going to be discussing how to gang up your images for DTF printing. And we're going to be utilizing the Silhouette Studio program to do that. Many programs are used to be able to gang up. Uh, you're probably familiar with Photoshop. Um, there's Canva. Um, but we've had a series of customers asking us how to be able to gang up using Silhouette Studio, which is a, a fairly inexpensive program, uh, one that probably you guys may already have because you're already cutting vinyl and um, you're already familiar with how it works. So in this particular video, we're, we're going to cover the steps on how to do that using the Silhouette Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, by logging in here into my Silhouette Studio. And uh, as most of you know, uh, Silhouette has a standard version, which is very limited. You guys are probably using it normally to just cut your vinyl, to do your print and cut. And um, as you can see in this particular window, we're working with the Business Edition. Now this Business Edition is a program that it's an upgrade that you have to pay. I think it's about $50 and it's a one-time fee. Now, unlike uh, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and Corel, some of those programs you have to pay as you go, and it's a monthly membership that you have to pay yearly or monthly. And um, in this case, it'll just be a one-time fee to upgrade to be able to have additional features that you don't get on the standard basic Silhouette Studio, all right? Um, so one of the first things that I like to do is um, show my ruler. Um, so jump over to your uh, preferences and in there you'll be able to um, apply your ruler so that you know what size your area uh, is um, and you don't have to be guessing. Um, the first thing after that that I want you guys to take notice of um, is going to be um, the ability to, to create a worksheet that covers the size of the DTF that you guys are going to be requesting. Now, as most of you know, the DTF prints are, are usually set up in a 22 by 36 area. Now, if I come here to the media size, I, can, I don't really seem to have a particular size that takes me to that size. So it has to be a custom size. And if I'm working under the Cameo 4, unit, which is a 12 inch unit, you will not be able to create a 22 inch area. So that means that you have to click on um, Cameo Pro and that will allow you to go all the way up to 24 inches. So now we can go ahead and set up our area at um, 22 by 36. And we can go as we can kind of go as long as we want to, but we're for this particular video, we're just going to focus on one print sheet. And in here, we're going to be able to load everything we need in here. Okay. Um, so once I have my area right here, my rectangle area, this is a yard. This is 36 long by 22 wide. And this is how we're going to be able to submit everything in here and utilize as much as that space as possible, okay? So we're gonna go over here to open and we're gonna go look for that particular picture that we wanna basically gang up. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and select this one right here, preferably a PNG. But if it's not a PNG, one of the things that you could do, um, again, it's, uh, it's entirely, um, it's entirely up to you if you if you are getting an image that uh, happens to be a JPEG um, and you know how to remove the background using another program, you can do that. But remember that Silhouette can also help you to get this removed. So we're gonna we're gonna even though I opened a PNG which has no background here, what I'm gonna do is uh, basically show you. Uh, what size, what color is the background here? So by switching here under media, I'm going to go ahead and, and just click on, on gray. And that way you can actually see 
um, that this image right here does not have a border, does not have a background. And that's very important because remember, when you send anything to be printed in DTF, uh, you're going to need an image that's a PNG that has a transparent background so that that white doesn't get picked up by the printer. Uh, only the white in the design is the one that you want printed, okay? Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I could open a image of the same and basically remove the background here for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one right here, okay? So th this one right here is uh, my JPEG file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just copy it right here and um, and we go paste. Okay, so here we are. You can actually see the white background here. All right. So if you for some reason, okay, uh, don't have a way to remove the background in other programs, uh, like many people have, uh, and you want to utilize Silhouette for everything, there is a way for you to do that. And uh, basically, the way that you would do this is um, right here quickly, what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is we're going to trace the image right here, okay? And um, once, we, once we trace that image um, right here, I'm going to go ahead and select this and we're going to go trace the outer border and then what we're going to do is we're going to come here to this section right here for the modify panel and we're going to select that file again and we're going to click on crop okay and once we do okay once we do that all right here let's select the entire image including the cropped area we're going to click here and by clicking on crop we already removed the background right there and that's kind of what that's kind of what we want to do we want to be able to not have this white area in the in here so that's one way to get to the image already without a background and now we can go ahead and begin the process of ganging it up okay so as you can see, Silhouette gives you the size of the image in the border. So this image is 13 inches wide from here to here. We want to be able to resize it to somewhere around, let's say, what a large t-shirt would be. What Let's say it would be like, like about a 10, right? Um, and then that gives us the ability here to fit maybe two in there. So we're going to get as close as we can to the edge. Uh, we don't want to put it outside the area, so that's important. Now, if um, if I want to resize another image again, I could always do it up here as well. So you don't have to do it manually if you don't want to, uh, or you can delete this one. And since you already have this one, you can actually make a copy of that one by using your Alt key and drag your mouse tool right over here, right next to it. So there you go. And then we can highlight both of those hold down your alt key and uh, for those mac users i think you used command when it comes to that um, so we're gonna get the next one and then we're gonna do one more so we're gonna hold and there we go now let's say that i want to add some other sizes like a left chest or something for a sleeve or something like that and i don't really need more than just let's say four of the 10 inch so I'm going to go ahead and delete this extra one. And right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it down to like a, a sleeve. So a sleeve is usually somewhere about a four inch, um, same as a, a left chest. That would be good. Um, remember to come here and you could also resize it to the very inch. So if I want to resize this image right here and make it uh, four exactly, then I could go four, tab over. And that's going to make it exactly uh, four inches even, okay? So that's one option you have. So let's say I want to make more of these. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to go ahead and use the, um, the Alt key. And uh, we're going to make more copies of that so that we could use up as much of the space as possible. Um, we could come over here and make another four right here so i'll just have to do is just select as many as i want and then just make 
more of those, okay? So this is the, probably the easiest way to be able to do that. And then when we're finished and we have all of these guys that we wanna go ahead and have printed via DTF, then we're gonna come up here, we're gonna go File, Save As, and we're gonna put it in our hard drive and we're gonna select what file format we want. And uh, we've tested all of these different ones. And just to give you guys a quick wrap on these, the JPEG is gonna give you a white background. So you don't wanna select the JPEG, okay? The PNG is a great option, but we find that the Silhouette Studio program resizes the image after you save it and you submit it. So it arrives incorrectly sized nine times out of 10. So that means that the best one that we have since we can't use Silhouette format, is the SVG file format. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna name it whatever we wanna name it. If we wanna obviously call it DTF with the name of our file, and uh, we could request how many we want printed. So we could say, please print one or two or three, whatever that is. And uh, we're gonna save that in the chosen folder of our computer so that we could then email it obviously from there. And uh, once we click OK, then you will have a file already created in your folder in an SVG format with a transparent background, with all your sizes neatly placed and exactly the size that you intend it to be so that when we receive it, it's actually up to size. All right. Now, one of the things that I wanted to touch on before I finish with this video is it's, it's very important for a file to be vectorized. Okay. So now by the time we bring that file in here, it better be vectorized and it better be a high enough resolution with a 300 DPI minimum so that your file comes out as sharp and as perfect as possible. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we're, you know, grabbing things that our customers send us or, or we're fishing online and we're, you know, Googling for something and we forget how important it is to have a file that's high resolution. All right. So if you can't vectorize a file because you don't have a program that will do, there are many programs out there that you could, that you could do the vectorization online. Um, not everything can be vectorized. It all depends on the size of the image that you initially get. So uh, based on that, I just want to remind you that there is a way when you obviously, when you create this document that if your file is already in 300 DPI, then you can be sure that once you gang it up using that original 300 DPI file logo, you're going to get the proper resolution on your image. Um, so always make sure that everything you're working with is vectorized and everything has a 300 DPI minimum. And with that, I leave you to try this on your own and see how it goes. And if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us. And you can always do that at sales at floridaflex.com or DTF at floridaflex.com. Uh, we're here to answer all your questions because we want to make sure that this process is as pleasant and rewarding as possible. All right. Thanks again for watching. And if you like the video, don't forget to like. And if you um, subscribe, you will get notices of everything that we put in our YouTube channel um, eventually down the road. Thanks again. <laughs>